Here we go. This is as fresh as you could want to get mackerel cooked over the fire. And that smells lovely, rich, oily. Hmm. You can see why fishermen say the best fish you can eat is a fresh mackerel. Want some, Mike, or are you going to stay there? I'm going, to, I'm going to have some. You're going to be filming. Oh, I'm going to have some. That is amazing. Mm -hmm. That's what, 12 hours old? About 16, 18 hours yeah. old. Imagine what it's like cooked on the beach over a campfire. Yeah. Guys, while Dad is eating that, we're actually going to play you a clip of uh, Dad's friend Wayne, who caught this mackerel, didn't he? He caught yeah, it, and he actually yesterday. he goes through how to prepare it. Uh, it's just nice to have someone different, not just our ugly faces on it all the time. So um, yeah, go and enjoy it. Wayne's going to teach you a little bit about how to uh, fill it, really. Well, he is a fish chef. He, he is, is yeah. A proper fish cook. Been doing it for years. So um, enjoy this footage, and then we'll come back mm. to camp, and we'll just chat some rubbish. We look at the skeleton because I'll have eaten it all. <laughs> yeah. Well, there we go. Strings of mackerel coming in, tangled mackerel. That's one of our prime bait fish and eating fish here. Got some there, Wayne? Oh, I'm worth one on here, yeah. Yeah. There we go. We're out again, and we've managed to find a weather window. Beautiful day, and we found some mackerel, which are a rare commodity nowadays. What we're going to show you is um, how to prep one for a campfire. Um, possibly you could use the same preparation for a barbecue. Uh, these are going to go on a, a lovely campfire on a stainless grill. We'll show you how it's done. There we've got a beautiful mackerel, very nice size. And uh, what I suggest you do with a, a mackerel of this size is keep him whole if you can. So first thing, knife in the vent there. Don't want to go too deep, so just slit him up there. Oh, go up right, right past his... Uh, fins there and all that comes out so you want to get all of that stuff out now normally i'd keep this for the shark attractant but as we're already drifting it can go over the side so you want to take all that out and basically clean everything out all the track to all the entrails the lot needs to come out so you'll go right down to his vent where we put the slit in right up to the very top there and remove the lot and the best thing can, you can do while we're out at sea is give him a nice dunk in this lovely clean sea water. Well, there we go. We've cleaned him and we've washed him. Beautiful mackerel. You can see how lovely and shiny he is. Look at how bright the eyes are. Should be. It's only just been caught. Mackerel need to be treated very, very carefully. So keep them cool. Don't leave them out in the sun. They spoil very, very quickly. So we've got a nice ice box here and we're going to put him straight in there once we've prepped him. Now prep work. There's his pectoral fins. Basically, going literally close to the pectoral fin and just take his head clean off. Okay, that'll go in the rubby sack. Same with the tail, quite close to the root, probably about an inch, and then straight through like that. Now that is ready for the campfire. Now, what happens when you cook a fish whole like this with the bones on? It stays really, really moist, lovely, full of oil. Perfect. Really, you could fill that cavity if you wanted with a bit of salt, a bit of sea salt, maybe a bay leaf or two, lemon, something maybe like that. And then literally all you want to do, you can score the skin if you like, I prefer not to, and literally you just lay that on your campfire. Probably a fish of that size, quite a bit of depth to him there, so depending on the heat of the fire, you more likely want to give it probably six, seven minutes on each side. A nice fresh piece of fish like that, you could eat that raw. Nothing wrong with sushi in that, you could eat that at raw. I mean, all right, it might be uh, the only thing that could potentially harm you is uh, if it had a parasite or two in it. Um, I'm not into sushi personally. I don't want it raw. I don't want it ceviched, you know, cooked with the uh, lemon juice or, or such. It's not really to my taste. I like to cook it. If you cook it, a piece of mackerel on a campfire, there's not a lot of finer fish to eat. And we've got some lemon juice on here. We didn't have fresh lemon, so we used the old uh, actual lemon juice in the bottle. Oh wow, Dad, that is incredible. Eat some rice with it, maybe something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, we're just eating like cavemen at the moment. Yeah, yeah. But who cares? Mmm, that is brilliant. Mmm, I think I'm gonna have the rest of this, Dad. Well, we've got the other side as well. Mm. Whoa, that is that is fresh. Mm. Actually, now, some of you fishermen are out there. How did they catch those mackerel? We use these. They're called mackerel feathers. You generally purchase them, you string of four, string of six, 
These are, I think I've got, what, three, six, I've probably got about eight on there. Mm. And these were tied by a 90-year-old man at that time, and I've had them a few years, Frank Vinicum, an ex-commercial fisherman, and he caught Mako sharks, he caught, I can't tell you where he didn't catch Bit them of in a legend, the UK. Boy, isn't he? Yeah. A legend, mm. and a Second World War veteran. For you old guys out there, yeah, there's still some veteran. of you left. Proper, proper war veteran. Mm. If you do want to you know, see something else about Frank, he's a real Cornishman, and um, you know some of the military guys might be interested in his stories. Um, Go to what the show more, mate? Yeah, in the video description below, under, uh, yeah. underneath what says show more, there's a link to about Frank, really. I, I did him. interview Frank, and uh, that was about Second World War experience he had, and he still tied these for me. Amazing, isn't it? At 90. And how good are they? <laughs> well, they're good because they got yeah. about 100 mackerel yesterday between yeah. us, yeah. Yeah, good. Well, doubtless you saw Mike using this blowing stick to make the flames go, but what I want to know, theory time, guys, exactly what are these? Yes, right, they're a pair of bellows, we know that. Who invented them? Which nationality? A wood panel here, a wood panel there, and I guess this is the part that sucks the air in when you pull them apart. And this is, I guess, animal hide, tacked all around here, and a nozzle, the same as a blow stick, is compressing that air, look, exactly the same. I wanna know who invented them, how old they are, do they work? You bet your life they work. And another thing, how old are they? Does anybody out there know, not how old these are, but how old is the invention of bellows? We know they've, they're used like this to uh, really, really get a blacksmith's forge hot, incredibly hot, and possibly, I think they came with the invention of steel, iron ore, to force air. They realized they had to force air, oxygen, into the fire to get it really hot to melt steel. So is it in this sort of iron age that the bellows came about? I'm just curious because it's really basic. It's wood, it's animal hide, i.e. leather, but it still works. That's animal leather and wood way before the iron age. Who thought of putting them together? And now, unfortunately, I'm extremely hot and Mike's camera is about to <laughs> it's melting. About to combust. And of course, guys, I know you can't take these bushcraft in. It's much easier in our base camp to leave these here. We could leave that there as well. The one thing it doesn't do, it doesn't get you dizzy. 